good evening students so far we discussed the general characters and general classification of plants and then viruses and then bacteria today we are going to see the algae its characters and uh, nutrition and reproduction and life cycles etc now the word algae means actually sea weeds means sea weeds the word is actually coined by de condol but uh, he assigned the name algae to bryophytes later in 1853 linnaeus assigned the algae to the actual group of algae and the study of algae is known as algology or phycology but phycology is uh, the appropriate term but since this algology is also using and uh, the scientists who study algae or algologists or phycologists algae are chlorophyll bearing autotrophic non vascular and uh, non embryophytic talus plant body so here you can see the first one having chlorophyll because of the chlorophyll only they can prepare their own wood materials that is autotrophic and non vascular means in this there is no formation of xylem and phloem and another thing i introduce now that is not embryophytic embryo is not formed after gametic fusion these are non embryophytes and another important thing here the plant body is having talus talus is a plant body i told you already there you can find the plant body is not differentiated into the root stem and leaves such a plant body is known as talus so here this algae is differentiated from the fungi is it is chlorophyll bearing autotrophic non vascular plants with talus plant body next so famous algologists as i told you already the scientists who study algae are known as algologists the f e fritch the famous international algologist so he is regarded as the father of algology so whoever may be the great people of algae they should be the students of fritch for example the gosh and uh, iyengar and desigachari all the students of fritch and regarding india is concerned the famous algologist mop ayengar and then gosh tv desikachari is from tamil nadu mop ayengar from tamil nadu and oran singh gm smith vj chopman gw prescott y bharadwaj hd kumar these are the notable people many algologists are there sundarlingam in tamil nadu we have krishnamurthy we have so these people are notable people among algologists next general characters of algae so when uh, see the algae the plant body is a thallus i told you already and the thallus ranges from unicellular to multicellular organization right from uh, unicellular you could take uh, chlorella or chlamydomonas and you take multicellular and macrophytic forms like uh, laminaria sargassum fucus etc and then having green pigment so autotrophs another important point here and uh, the cell wall is commonly made up of cellulose that is a very important point to differentiate this algae with fungi whereas in fungi the material the outer cell wall material is chitin Whereas here it is cellulose. Next, the reserve food material is starch. Here the reserve food material is starch, and whereas in fungi the reserve food material is a glycogen. The members reproduce by 
the vegetative, asexual, and sexual methods. So, regarding this vegetative reproduction, the plant material may be cut into pieces and each which develop into a new plant that we will learn later. And asexual, where the formation of pores and the not involvement of uh, sexual organs that is asexual. And the sexual methods, where the fusion of gametes takes place and formation of the zygote that is sexual reproduction. And uh, another very, very important point from algae to bryophyta is the sex organs are devoid of sterile jocket cells. Sex organs devoid of jocket cells. Whereas here you can find only the sex organs are like this. Whereas in bryophyta where you can find the outer there is a sterile jocket layer is there. This is the difference between the algae and this what is called uh, bryophytes. So, in bryophytes, outer sterile jocket cells are there around the sex organs, whereas in algae, no sex or this outer sterile layer. And another important thing here, no embryo is formed after gametic union. So, these are non embryophytes, these are non embryophytes, and in algae and fungi also, no embryo is formed. Embryo is formed from bryophyta. So, from bryophyta, those plants are called embryophytes. So, it is non embryophyte. Another thing here, as I told you already, there is no vascular tissue development. There is no development of. So, these are non vascular plants. Regarding the habit, is there a variety of habit you can find in algae? A variety where you can find in all places that you can learn soon. All algae are aquatic, either freshwater, for example, spirogyra, or marine, you can find in seawater, laminaria, and sargassum, pedina, palarpa, etc. A few species are terrestrial, they are found on the land, that is called adophophytes. Adophophytes, adop, adopic means land, they grow on land or adophophytes. Sorry. P H Y P H Y T E S adophophytes. Example: Centifolia, Pricella, Chlorella, Ocheria, Euglena, Ocitoria, Oscillatoria, etc. So you remember, majority you can find in water. A few species are found on the land. Those are called adophophytes. And Centifolia, Pricella. Chlorella, Ocheria, Euglena, Oscillatoria are growing on the land. Regarding the fresh water, it is uh, ranges from the pools to ponds, streams, slow running waters and rivers. A few genera are known to grow even under extreme conditions like uh, hot springs, glaciers, and snow. Example, heteroharmogonium, mastigoclades, and cytonema, mastigoclades, C-L-A-D-U-S, mastigoclades, cytonema. So, these are all uh, mixophysy members or blue-green algae. Now, plankton, this is a technical term. Plankton generally, the plants or animals which grow on the surface of the water or just are floating in the water. So, many freshwater and marine organisms which float easily on the surface of water are called planktons. If it is a plant, it is a phytoplankton. The floating material may be a, an animal that is zooplanktons. So, planktons are also again differentiated in new technical terms. When the water, plankton, the open water are called euplanktons, just like a ditches on the roadsides in the fields, etc. And rivers called potomoplanktons uh, and ponds are called helioplanktons. There are particular technical terms are given depend upon the habit. Benthic forms. See, some algae which are attached at the bottom of the shallow water 
and also along the edges of the seas are called uh, the benthic forms. Next, some are lithophytes. Lithos means rock. Python means plant. So the plants attached with uh, rocks are called lithophytes. So most of the algae attach on the rocks and stones in the normal water or it is fresh water or it may be a marine water. Example, Batricospermum and Enteromorpha. So these are lithophytes and some species of Eulothrix also attached with stones that is also a lithophyte. So lithophyte means the plants attached to rocks and stones. And uh, the next type is halophytes. Halo means saline water. So the plants which grow in water having high concentration of salinity, those are called uh, halophytes. Example, Chlamydomonas yacharenbergi. Yacharenbergi is a halophyte. The next one, the samophytes. Samos means sand. So when the plants grow, <coughs> On sand, those are called samophytes. These are pochiria and many diatoms which you can find in the sand. Epiphytes. Epiphyte. Epi means on. Phyton means plant. So the plants grow on other plants are called epiphytes. So here the epiphytes may be algae on other algae and algae on other higher plants. There are types are there. So in the one, in algae on other algae, Rhodomenia on Laminaria. Rhodomenia is an algae, Laminaria is another algae. So this Rhodomenia lives on Laminaria, that is an epiphyte. And many diatoms on Spirogyra, that is another uh, relation. The diatoms are algae, Spirogyra is an algae. So algae grow on other algae. The second one is algae on higher plants. Higher plants, just dicots and monocot plants are higher plants. So, Udogonium, Cladophora on other water plants. Udogonium and Cladophora, these are water plants which live or which grow on other water plants. So, this is an association, algae on higher plants. Endophytic forms. Endo means inside, phyton means plants. So the plants which live in other plants, those are called endophytic forms. Algae occur within other plants. So here, these are all uh, very, very good examples that you can learn. Nostoc found in the thallus of Anthocyros. Nostoc is algae, Anthocyros is a bryophyte. So the algae lives in the thallus of bryophyte. So, nostoc found in the thallus of Anthocyros. Another example, anabina found in the leaves of azolla. Anabina is an algae and azolla is a pteridophyte. Azolla is a pteridophyte. So, this algae lives in the leaves of a pteridophyte. Example, anabina found in the leaves of azolla. Next, nostoc and anabina, both nostoc and anabina found in the corolloid roots of cycas. Nostoc, anabina, algae, cycas is a gymnosperm. This, gym, this gymnosperm plant have a special roots, those are called corolloid roots, looking like corals, corals. So these are called corolloid roots. These you can find this, nostoc, anabina, found in the roots and fix atmospheric nitrogen, nitrogen fixing that is helpful to the cycas plant. This is a type of a symbiotic association of this blue green algae, these are called blue green algae and a gymnosperm. Next, epizoics. As a epi means on, zoi means animals. So, these algae grow on other animals. For example, Cladophora <coughs> crispata on the shells of snails. On the snail, on the snail shell, you can find these algae are growing. Cladophora crispata on the shells of snails. Endozoics. So, these plants live, algae lives inside another animal. 
that is called endozoic. Algae found inside the animal. For example, chlorella, generally the chlorella species which grow inside hydra are called zoo chlorella, found in hydra. Hydra is an animal. Hydra is an animal, you know, phylum cilentrata. So, another example, blue-green algae are living inside protozoans. So, generally, this algae lives in animals. So, the blue-green algae which live inside the protozoans are called cyanelle. That is a technical term, you have to remember. Cyanelle is a technical term because this here, this cyanophysian algae found in the protozoans called cyanelle. Cryophytes, cryon, cryon means uh, uh, snow or ice. So, plants which grow on snow or ice are called uh, cryophytes. And uh, some algae grow on ice and produce a characteristic color. When you see the hilly areas or mountains with the snow mountains, etc., they are having different colors. They may be red in color, yellow color or blue color or black color. So, different colors which you have they by this algae. For example, the red snow is due to the Chlamydomonas, Chlamydomonas nivalis. Because of Chlamydomonas nivalis, the snow looks red color. Another example that is Eulothrix fleca. So, one example, another Placida is one more example. Eulothrix flecka and Eulothrix placida is another example for the red snow. Next, yellow snow is due to Chlamydomonas yellow stonensis. Chlamydomonas yellow stonensis, it gives yellow color on the snow. The next, the black snow is due to Scotella nivalis. Scotella nivalis the mountain or the snow area becomes black in color. Next, thermophytes. So, the name itself indicating the plants or algae which live in high temperature places, occur in hot waters or near the hot springs, these algae are found. Those are Cytonema, Mastigoclades, Heterohormogonium. This I told you already. The thermophytes which live in hot waters. Now, these three also belong to the group blue green algae. Next, parasites. So, so far we have discussed that the algae are autotrophic, having chlorophyll and uh, prepare its own food material, etc. But very few species are parasites. Regarding the parasites, one is cephalures viricens causes the red rust disease on tea leaves. It affects the tea leaves and it swallows this chloroplast and produces a red powder on the leaves. So, it is called the red rust of tea. The second example have cephalures coffea causes red rust on coffee leaves. In addition to these uh, cephalures, some other species like uh, rhodochytrium, pillosiphon, etc. are also parasitic forms. They also cause diseases on other plants. So, this is an account of uh, parasites. The next topic we have in algae, so far you have known the definition of algae and uh, different types of habitat, habit of algae. Now, Thales organization, the Thales organization, so a wide range of variation in structure and uh, structure that is from unicellular to macrophytic forms. A number of examples we have regarding this Thales variation. So, we will discuss one by one unicellular forms. So, you can find uh, this is a, what we call a primitive type and uh, there you can find only 
an individual single cell carries all the metabolic functions of a plant that is the unicellular organism which moves from one place to another place with the help of flagella that is called motile unicellular types or motile unicellular forms example chlamydomonas the second one non motile unicellular organisms they cannot move from one place to another place not having flagella that is chlorella let us have their uh, diagrams also or uh, the photographs so here you have uh, two photographs that is given in this chlamydomonas a single cell with uh, a cup shaped chloroplast and two flagella and an eye spot it moves from one place to another place having a cell wall and uh, this is the pyranoid this is uh, the stored food material stored food material is found in the chloroplast and whereas in this here you can have a cup shaped chloroplast whereas here a girdle shaped chloroplast here uh, it is called a parietal chloroplast and having nucleus unicellular organism but no flagella so that it cannot move from one place to another place so it is a motile unicellular there is non motile unicellular organism and next we have the multicellular forms so in the beginning you have only one cell then go to the next one what happen multicellular many cells unite together just like a colony a colony of cells a group of cells having a common function so that is motile colonial forms wall walks and non motile colonial form hydrodiction so in this you can find the diagram the wall walks looking very nice here so here you can find number of cells number of cells number of chlamydomonas like cells and unite together and common life that is called coenobium another name is a number of chlamydomonas like cells leading a life that is coenobium example wall walk the second one hydrodiction diction means network diction means network so these cells are arranged as a, as a net a net you can find so at each place you can find nearly and each place one two three four cells you can find so hydrodiction this is non motile colonial form next multicellular forms multicellular forms in this a pomeloid stage pomeloid the vegetative cells are surrounded by mucilaginous matrix so here you can find pomella is a name of an algae in this algae the vegetative cells are surrounded by mucilaginous substance so if the other organism is looking like pomella it is a pomeloid stage nalla so please remember oid means like pomeloid means pomella like structure so because of the having mucilaginous matrix around the cells example tetraspora tetraspora the name itself indicating that uh, four cells unite together tetraspora another is the pomella the next one dendroid dendron means a uh, wood or tree so the plants are arranged just like a tree just like a microscopic tree example egbellocystis now let us see the diagrams so as i told you already here a tetraspora where four cells they are separated but actually they are grouped together like this tetraspora around which formation of a mucilaginous wall the next thing egbellocystis just like a tree just like looking like a tree but it is an algal tree egbellocystis a tree like manner next the filamentous forms filamentous forms so here unbranched free floating unbranched free floating so there is a Uh, filament of uh, uniseriate uniseriate filament and it uh, moves from one place to another place but it is a previous what's called uh, in the early stage the spirogyra is attached but later it is removed from the attachment and moves freely in the water the next one is this unbranched uh, attached forms so it is also not branching no branching here also but it is free floating it is an attached form Filotrix. Now you see the Chlamydomonas filaments. Sorry, the Spirogyra filaments that I will tell you later. The life cycle of Spirogyra, etc. Here the cells are longer than bread. 
unbranched filament and a spiral shaped chloroplast. That's why it is called spirogyra. Spiral shaped chloroplast is found in the cells. The cells are here, one cell, another cell, etc. And spiral shaped chloroplast, ribbon shaped chloroplast, which is arranged in a spiral manner. Okay, the next one is the eulothrix. As I told you already, it is an unbranched filamentous form and the base is attached to a stone. So, the basal cell is modified in such a way to attach to the substratum. The basal cell is called the hold fast, that is holding fastly, that is called hold fast. And then it is also called apteron, apteron or hold fast. Next, in the, among the filamentous forms, so far we discussed the unbranched filaments and now branched filamentous forms. Branched filamentous forms, in this a branched filamentous form, a filament having branches, example cladophora and heterotrichus, another technical term that you have to learn is, there are two types of branches. One type of branch that is prostrate on the ground and another type it is vertical that is called the heterotrichus habit. So, heterotrichus habit means there are two types of branches, one branch which is prostrate on the ground and another branch it is vertical. So, ectocorpus is the example. So, now here the cladophora there you can find the branches many branches and it will become very big plant having the branches etc. Example cladophora. But here in this uh, ectocorpus, there are a prostrate branches you can find in the lower side, but it is a cutted species and you can find, naturally if you find, there are many branches which are found in the ground that is prostrate branch and some are the vertical branches, a type of this known as this heterotrichus habit, heterotrichus habit. Regarding this filamentous forms, so branched uniaxial filament, there is only one axis, a longitudinal axis and the second one there you can find multi-axial forms. The same axis you can have many branches like, so that is multi-axial forms. If you happen to see, you can see the next diagram or photograph, you can see the uniaxial and multi-axial filaments. So, these are branched uniaxial batrachospermum, branched multi-axial filaments, polysiphonia, polysiphonia. So, in this uni-axis, there is only a single axis just like a trunk of a tree, you can find a single axis and it is highly branching. But whereas here you see the diagram, there you can find many axils, these are many axils, here you can find 4 or 5 and when come to the branches, you can find a 2 axis and some layers you can find many axis in the base. So, this is polysiphonia is an example and both are red algae, both are red algae, batrogospermum as well as polysiphonia. The next form is the siphonous form, siphon means a tube like, siphon means a tube like form, this is aseptate and multinucleate, if you happen to see clearly, there you can find many nuclei, many nuclei are there as a thallus, example, Ocheria. So, generally the Ocheria found in the sand, see there is chamophyte, sand only. Next, we will go to the uh, parenchymatous form or a macrocystis form, macrocystis means macro form, that is a very big plant, very big size and this macrocystis forms, the thallus is differentiated into root like, stem like and leaf like or root stem and leaf like structures and uh, more parenchymatous, the cell is parenchymatous, example brown algae, there you can find a brown algae and a green algae and a red algae also, we can find these parenchymatous forms. Now, let us see in brown algae, example, sargassum and laminaria. 
So the laminaria and sargassum, they are simply they are looking like a potted plants, potted plants, higher plants, but not uh, these are algae and this laminaria, just a uh, leaf like structures, the very big in uh, trees, etc. It is uh, just is shown in the diagram, a small diagram, <coughs> but it is very high. Maximum you can have a like the 2 meters to 20 meters you can find in the sea. The second one is the sargassum. This there you can find some uh, leaf like structures are there, actually not leaves, uh, root like structures, not roots. So these are found in this uh, brown algae, members of brown algae. Next, regarding this parenchymatous forms, the red algae, example porphyra and gracilaria, we got the green algae, terra and alva. We can see those uh, photographs. Regarding this red algae, porphyra and gracilaria, just looking like uh, flowers, but not this one. These are parenchymatous structures, you can find porphyra. This is also edible that we will learn later in the economic importance. And the gracilaria, just like a gracilaria, looking like a grasses, it is called gracilaria. These two plants come under red algae. Regarding this green algae, <coughs> parenchymatous forms, this is the cara, you can find looking like just like a nodes and internodes. At each node, you can find flowers like that, not here. It is an algae and it is a parenchymatous form. The second one, alva, so this very smooth and gelatinous, so it is called alva, it is under this green algae. <coughs> so, so far we discussed the habit and also the talus variations right from <coughs> unicellular to multicellular organism and uh, some technical terms that also you can learn in this habit. The next we will go to this cell structure. So in algae, uh, we have many classes that we will learn later and this blue green algae is also included in algae. Later, based on the difference in the structure, it is separated to give a cyanobacteria. The blue green algae or cyanophyce or myxophyce is separated to give a new name cyanobacteria that is the cyanophyce member having the characteristics of a bacteria so it is called cyanobacteria but that also also included in algae so we learn this uh, regarding the cell structure uh, we have to discuss the two types of cellular organizations number one prokaryotic cells it includes the myxophyce or cyanophyce or cyanobacteria, since it is a cyanophyce member, cell wall is made up of mucopeptides, mucopeptides and genetic material is DNA and the lack of that well organized nucleus, that is prokaryotic nucleus, that is no nuclear membrane and lack of mitochondria, chloroplast, endoplasma reticulum and Golgi bodies. So these are all characters of prokaryotes and having the 70s type of ribosomes and uh, this have two subunits of one is of 50s, another is of 30s, the total here you can find 70s type of ribosome. Reserved food materials are polyglucoside granules and uh, cyanophysian granules or it is also called cyanophysian starch, example myxophysi and uh, the second one where you can find highly developed uh, eukaryotic cells. So except the blue green algae, remaining all the algae are eukaryotic where the cell wall is made up of cellulose and in some plants silica is found in the cell walls of diatoms, diatoms is one group of algae there you can find the cell walls are made up of silica and uh, well organized nucleus that is having nuclear membrane and chromatin reticulum and nucleolus etc and having mitochondria, Golgi bodies, 
endoplasmic reticulum, plastids, etc. Plastids are of different types to have, chloroplasts are of different types you can have, etc. But regarding the chromosome number, there is a very interesting way you can find the chromosome number from two to much numbers. For example, in Porphyra linearis, the chromosome number is only two, and whereas that is 2n is equal to 2 we have. In nitrium digitalis, the chromosome number is 592. There is an interesting feature in this nitrium digitalis is bioluminescence. Bioluminescence means that is what is called uh, giving light, giving light automatically that is called bioluminescence. That is luminescence by exiting that light by a orga biological organism that is called bioluminescence this nitri nitrium having that character of bioluminescence okay, thank you tomorrow we will discuss the reproduction and life cycles thank you